integral from negative 3 to 5 of square root of absolute value of x cubed dx. Now, absolute value of x is usually harder to deal with compared to values like x or negative x. So let's try to turn absolute value of x into x or negative x. Realize that absolute value of x is equal to x when x is greater than 0, and absolute value of x is equal to negative x when x is less than 0. Because if you think about taking absolute value of 5, that's going to get you 5. That's the same thing you're starting with. Plug in 5 as x, you're going to get 5. But if you think about absolute value of negative 5, in this case, our x, our x is negative 5, then you have to multiply by negative 1. You have to do negative x to get positive 5. So, absolute value of x is x when x is greater than 0, and negative x when x is less than 0. So let's try to break this integral so we can simplify absolute value of x. An easy way of doing that is to go from negative 3 to 0 of square root of absolute value of x cubed dx and add it to integral that goes from 0 to 5 of square root of absolute value of x cubed dx. I'm simply splitting going from negative 3 to 5 to negative 3 to 0 and 0 to 5 and adding them up. And now let's try to evaluate this. The, this one is simpler to do, so let me begin with this one. So you have integral from 0 to 5, and when x is going from 0 to 5, when x is going from 0 to 5, your x is greater than 0, so absolute value of x simply becomes x. So you have square root of instead of absolute value of x cubed, we can just simply write x cubed dx. So we can simply write x cubed instead of absolute value of x cubed. How about the one on the right? Now there's two ways of going about this. You can say it's integral from negative 3 to 0 of square root of something cubed. And in this case, our absolute value of x is going to turn into negative x because your x is negative as you're going from negative 3 to 0. So you can either choose this path and you should get the same answer. But let me do it like this. Let me keep this the same. Let me keep this the same. Realize that integral from negative 3 to 0 of square root of absolute value of x cubed dx is equal to integral from 0 to 3 of square root of absolute value of x cubed dx because this function because this function is even function. And by even function, I mean you get the same thing out of it when you plug in when you plug in a number and the negative of the number. So if you plug in x equals to 2, we should get the same thing out of it as when you're plugging in x equals to negative 2. And that's understandable. If you plug in 2, we're going to get square root of 2 cubed. If we plug in negative 2, we're going to get square root of absolute value of negative 2, which is 2 cubed. So we are getting the same result. So this function is even. And because this function is even, you can think of its graph going something like this. So if you graph it, it should be something like this. It should be symmetric with respect to y-axis because when you plug in some number, let's say 2, and some number negative 2, we have to get the same value for every single point. So it's going to be symmetric like this. And if you think about going from negative 3 to 0, an area from 0 to 3, realize that these two areas are the same. So we can either go from negative 3 to 0 or 0 to 3 because it's even. It should get us the same thing. And going from 0 to 3 makes it simplify slightly nicer, in my opinion, because you have square root of x cubed dx once again like you have on the right side. So that's going to be x cubed dx because you're looking at positive x. Or you can go about evaluating this integral. That should work out just the same. But I, I like this more. It, it, looks more. it looks more simplified and looks more elegant. Anyway, let's continue this. Realize that the function inside is x to the 3 halves for both of them. And it's very easy to integrate x to the 3 halves dx. That's simply x to the 5 halves because 5 halves is 3 halves plus 1, divided by 5 halves, also known as 2 fifths x to the 5 halves plus c. So we have 2 fifths x to the 5 halves going from 0 to 3, plus 2 fifths x to the 5 halves once again, now going from 0 to 5. And realize when you plug in 0, we're going to get 0 out of it, so we can ignore those. Let's just evaluate it at 3, evaluate it at 5, and add them up. So we're going to get 2 fifths times 3 to the 5 halves 
plus two fifths times five to the five halves. Let's just simplify this and be done. What is three to the five halves? Well, something to the five halves is same thing as something to the four halves times something to the one half because four half plus one half gets you five halves and three to the four half is same thing as three squared and you have three to the one half. So we have two fifths and three to the five halves is nine times square root of three. So we have nine times square root of three plus two fifths and using the same reasoning, five to the five halves is going to be five squared times five to the one half or 25 times square root of 5. So let's multiply this out. We have 18 over 5 times square root of 3 for the first one. And for the next one, 25 and 5 divides. So we have 5 up top, multiplied by 2 to get 10 times square root of 5. And we're done. So integral from negative 3 to 5 of square root of absolute value of x cubed dx is 18 over 5 times square root of 3 plus 10 times square root of 5.